For more on the unfolding nuclear situation, we're joined from Washington by Robert Alvarez. He is a senior scholar at the Institute for Policy Studies. Mr. Alvarez, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. First thing I want to ask you, the chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission says that there is no water covering the spent fuel rods at reactor number four. But the Japanese say that is not the case. Obviously, there is conflicting information here. But if there indeed is no water covering that spent fuel rod, how dire is the situation? Well, if the water were to drain, uh, probably uh, because of a uh, hole or a crack in the pool wall, uh, the spent fuel, uh, if it's exposed for any period of time, for example, several hours, will catch fire. Uh, uh, what will happen is that the metal cladding that surrounds the fuel itself is made of a uh, metal alloy of zirconium. And the radiation in the spent fuel will cause that metal to heat up to the point where it will spontaneously ignite. And the metal will also uh, uh, oxidize and uh, generate hydrogen, which will feed the fire. Uh, then, if that fire were to really take off, uh, the radioactive contents of the spent fuel, uh, particularly cesium-137, could be released in the fire and could spread and cause uh, a profound uh, and heavy contamination. When you say profound and heavy contamination, what kind of a radius here? I mean, are you talking about a meltdown at this point, if indeed that is the case? Well, the fuel is bo would basically be undergoing melting as well as uh, ignition uh, because of the uh, zirconium. So there, w both both things would be going on, and the the smoke from the fire uh, would be would would contain uh, large amounts of long-lived radioactivity. You, I guess it's important to understand that the spent fuel is uh, uh, several cores that are used up and contains more long-lived radioactive materials than the core of the reactor so that they're trying to get control of. And right now, we understand there are several ways that radiation is already leaking out of this plant. Can you explain how that is happening? Well, it seems to be leaking out primarily from the reactor vessels and possibly from the spent fuel pools. And uh, I'm not sure all the reasons why, but you know, you have to understand there was a, an enormous earthquake followed by a very destructive tsunamis, which destroyed a lot of the plant's infrastructure and capability to uh, cool the reactor and the spent fuel. And they have been taking uh, uh, desperate measures to try to try to restore cooling and and keep these uh, very highly radioactive materials under some sort of control. What has happened in the course of of, of this struggle is that um, the zirconium in the spent fuel has been generating hydrogen in the reactor vessel, for example and they have had to uh, get that stuff out of the reactor vessel because it's overpressurizing. That has resulted in some very destructive explosions, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in uh, buildings three, uh, buildings one. Uh, building three, that building seems to be totally destroyed and the area on the reactor top, the infrastructure, the cranes, the, uh, the piping uh, and the spent fuel pool are all uh, been, been, been impacted by the, that explosion. And if you look at the satellite photos, you will see that there's copious amounts of steam coming off of the spent fuel pool in building number three or reactor number three, which indicates that the spent fuel pool is now exposed to the sky and is heating up so much that it's evaporating into the, uh, into the atmosphere. Mr. Alvarez, I need to stop you here because there's a lot going on, a lot for us to try to digest and understand. But with all of this knowledge and this information, what is priority number one? Putting out the fires, cooling the fuel rods, moving people farther away from this site. What is priority number one? I think priority number one is protecting the people who live nearby. And in, to do that, you have to uh, provide cooling and to stabilize the enormous heat that's being uh, generated by the 
fuel in the reactor and the spent fuel in the pools. And what has happened is that the earthquake, tsunami, and other events on the site have destroyed the infrastructure that the plant w would, would have relied on to, to provide these emergency measures and are now taking extraordinary and in some cases I consider to be heroic measures uh, because some of the radiation exposures that have been uh, reported on site are of a life-threatening nature. U.S. officials are encouraging Americans to evacuate from about a 50-mile radius of that plant. Now, that's a greater distance than what the Japanese are recommending. Again, we're dealing with conflicting information. What should people be concerned about most? I mean, are these numbers correct, or should they just get as far away as possible? Well, I think that the, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is taking a much more conservative position, and this reflects the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's official policy of uh, accidents of this severity is that if an accident of this severity were to occur in the United States, it would prompt an evacuation within a 50-mile radius. This apparently is not necessarily the policy of the Japanese government. All right, Robert Alvarez, uh, breaking it down for us, helping us try to understand the dire situation that's taking place in Japan. From the Institute for Policy Studies, Mr. Alvarez, we do appreciate your insight. Thank you. Thank you.